Hi all, Paolo Malmqvist, fire protection engineer and former battalion chief from Sweden. I made a test the other week uh, where I put out uh, 3 kilowatt hours of lithium ion batteries in a battery pack with 10 gallons, that is 35 liters of water. Uh, I know this is only one specific test with one configuration and one cell type, but I also know that Renault does this on their production vehicles, and it is a very interesting method to know more about. So I thought I'll show you what happened. So, is it possible to put out this fire with this low flow of water? Uh, yes, the answer is yes. And the fire on the left is uh, a reference fire with uh, the same kind of batteries, same uh, state of charge, like the one we will use in the battery pack later. Here is the battery packs tested. They are on 500 watt hours each, totaling 3 kilowatt hours. Brand new batteries with 100% state of charge. And I've mounted six thermocouples on them to measure temperatures during the test. This is the box where I put the battery modules. There is one attached pipe with a fire hose connection. And this is not a video describing a method or telling you to start flood batteries with water. Methods and routines are decisions for your employer to make based on more research than an internet video. The intent of this video is to show how good plain water can stop propagation of a thermal runaway in a battery pack. And as I said earlier, Renault is using this method, so it's nothing new or something I have invented. Here you can see the modules within the battery box with about a 6 to 12 millimeter spacing a quarter to a half inch, uh, that is. Lithium ion batteries are not easy to ignite. It takes quite an effort even when heating them directly with the smoldering carbon rods like I did here. I even had to help it out a little bit extra with a propane torch to get it started. Pre-burn is important. A battery fire is slow spreading fire initially. Putting it out immediately after the first pop would be easy. So a more reasonable time is to let there be a first pop that indicates something, telling people around that something is going on. And when the second larger pop comes, start a 10 minute timer. That is the time for fire brigades to get dispatched and on the scene starting their, wor their work. Uh, before the first pop, it took 20 minutes of constant heating of the initial cells. Five minutes after the first bang from this larger bang, and I started the 10 minute timer. One important thing to know regarding battery fires is that it is not a constant thermal runaway in the battery pack. The thermal runaway only lasts for a couple of seconds, depending on the cell size. And after that, it's a regular fire within the battery pack, heating up nearby cells, causing them to have a thermal runway for a couple of seconds. So what we do with the water is not to put out a thermal runaway battery. We cool the surrounding cells and keep them below the boiling temperature of water, and thereby hindering the propagation of the thermal runaway. If you look at the temperature uh, to the right, uh, the, the left one didn't work, but the right one is working. We have 320, 330 degrees centigrade, rates, which are above to, to initiate thermal runaway on, on those cells. But we have 46 and 53 degrees centigrade in other modules. And that means that, that we are well below the temperature for thermal runaway. So when we add water now, we will stop those 
batteries where we have those temperatures from starting a thermal runaway. And now the 10 minute mark has passed and we start flowing water with the low flow that we saw from the beginning. It's 10 gallons per minute so it will take a minute to fill up the box. So let's talk limitations with the setup I, I had. Uh, the voltage is one of them. Uh, in this case I had uh, 3.7 volt modules, uh, not the hundred, several hundred volt modules that exist in modern vehicles. Uh, and that of course can cause uh, different problems with the arcing and so on. But as I said earlier, uh, Lenovo is making it in their production cars and uh, the German company Dekra uh, are using a method to, to uh, fill up battery cells, battery packs, if they get a thermal runaway. And, and uh, in that case, their tool is limited at a thousand volts. So it is possible. Cell type is another one, or the size and uh, type of cell. This was a cylindrical cell. Uh, if you would have a prismatic or a pouch cell, uh, they would swell in a way that maybe would uh, hinder the water to reach the other cell. Uh, but that could be uh, solved. In some cases, the battery modules are spaced within the battery pack. So, so it would certainly work for, for uh, some models that have that kind of uh, cell setup. Cooling system. Uh, it often is spoken about cooling system if you have a liquid cooling system and there is a belief that that will uh, help prevent the thermal runaway. But the cooling system, of course, it helps prevent the thermal runaway. But when it is go going uh, and have gone for a while, the cooling system will not help. Uh, a liquid cooling system uh, is not that you have uh, the battery cells within a, a fluid. It's only that you have a liquid flowing uh, beneath or beside the battery cells that is connected to the battery cells and thereby cooling them. Energy density is another thing that is often mentioned as a hinder. If you get new high energy density batteries, that will be a problem to flood with water or penetrate the, the battery pack. Uh, to remember is that most of the energy in a lithium ion battery cell is uh, chemical energy in, in form of the, the electrolytes and the plastic uh, surrounding it, the battery cells. So even if we, we get a high energy density that is based on the electrical energy, the total energy density does not get very much higher even if you increase the energy density, the electrical energy density in a battery cell. Uh, more thermal events after fire is out. That is, uh, of course, a problem. Uh, and that is something you, you need to take in account if you uh, are going to flood the battery. But in some cases, it is better to, to quench the fire there, move the vehicle, and then deal with the other things afterwards. For example, in a parking garage, that, that would be a good thing to do. Uh, and the last thing I was going to mention is exploding gases from electrolysis. Uh, if we have a higher voltage battery and we will get salts uh, solved in the fire water, there will be electrolysis creating hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, and that is something that we need to, to deal with as well. Uh, and that could be in form of ventilation. It could be in the form of keeping the uh, windows of the of the vehicle open so it vents automatically from the vehicle to keep the battery pack full of water so there is no room for uh, this kind of gases to uh, fill up. So this was the last thing I was going to talk about and uh, if you have information or you can tell me about things I don't know that it would be good to know please let me know you can see the email and the web page I run uh, on the page. Thank you. Bye-bye.